TMZ TV. I keep telling people, well, people tell me, I should say that it's going to be so great when we see Paul. It's like, there he is, that's the man. Yes, I'm not disagreeing with that, but my contention is that I think Paul is going to be even more excited to see us. No, not even kidding. I've said that to many people. You've heard me say it. I probably said it on this show. Well, he'll tell you himself, Paul, like he'll tell me anyway. I can hear him. You can't, but yes, that we're at the tail end of the apostasy. He was at, at the beginning of it. We're at the tail end of it. Am I right? I yes. What? No, no, we don't have concubines. No, I'm not even kidding. I'm not even kidding you. We have done this without concubines. Paul. Not only that, we're not even allowed to look at him. I'm not even kidding. We can't even look at him. You think we have concubines? All right, we got to bring you up to speed. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. But anyway, yes, we are at so many disadvantages today uh, with technology, with the poison in the air, the poison in the water, the poison in the food, uh, no concubines. Uh, the family has been crushed. It's, we have so many disadvantages. This is part of being at the tail end of the apostasy. It's all part of it. Paul lists the whole shebang there, right there in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Men will be proud, selfish, lovers of money, lovers of, you know, breakfast cereal. That'll be their main thing. Everybody's going to be messed up. And at the end, the worst thing of all is having a form of devoutness but denying the power. This is Martin Zender. Welcome to... MZTV. Okay, now you know the importance of signing up on my website. Go to my website, sign in, become a member, because then you get emails. You see, I need a way to contact you in case this happens again. You saw what happened here, and people were panicked because where's Martin? He's not on YouTube anymore. Well, if you signed up on my website and gotten on the email list then you will be assured by us we will be sending you messages it's a way to communicate with you you will see a link down here to sign up and you get some free stuff i think you get a free report called what is a believer which is going to be coming out as a book so get on that email list please you get some other another free something or other and no not a signed not a paul's autograph no he's gone now anyway so Furthermore, the reason I thought I was getting away, the reason I thought I could skate with YouTube was that I, I muted the ticklish sections. There was not one controversial word on MZTV 894 that I did not mute. But apparently, it was naive of me to think that I could outsmart the the algorithmic demons of YouTube by adjusting my audio. No, no, far more sophisticated. It was my ignorance. I apologize. They, they had warned me once, and they said, this is a warning. Next time you're going to get a strike. I thought, well, I'll just turn down the volume. <laughs> no, they, they have X-ray vision. So I'm going to avoid that in the future. Don't worry. I will not get a second strike, let alone a third strike. All right, so now speaking of the Apostle Paul, I have mentioned several times over the years how he gave his work to God. He dedicated his work to God. When he died, he was alone in prison, not a friend. And he wrote his last letter to Timothy, hoping to revive this kid, who I think was on the brink of just leaving the whole thing. I think Timothy was on the brink of quitting. Either he had a girlfriend who had a father who wanted him to join the family business. I don't know, but Paul was desperate that this message be carried on. Um, I think he died before he even knew if his letter got to Timothy. And I think that Paul, and I think that Paul didn't even know if his other letters, you know, little letters like Romans, first letter to the Corinthians, the letter to the Galatians, the letter to the Ephesians. I don't think he was absolutely sure that those letters were preserved. He died thinking possibly that it was all just for a few people. Little did he know, ladies and gentlemen, that, but he, he dedicated his work to God. I give it over to God. 
It's almost like Jesus Christ on the cross. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Paul committed his work to God. Look what God has done. Paul, talk about faith. Paul had faith that God would honor his work. If Paul could see it now, that 2,000 years later, we're still talking about his work. We're still analyzing every detail of Romans. His letters are in the most popular, best-selling book in the world that nobody understands. I mean, they named the city in, in Brazil after him, Sao Paulo, and they have a giant statue dedicated to him in Sao Paulo. He would barf on the street if he saw his statue in Sao Paulo and everything they have done to him. But he would rejoice that we are still talking about him. He would love it. He would be absolutely amazed that 2,000 years have gone by. And not only were his letters preserved, but they're bound in a book of which there have been printed millions of copies, and we are analyzing his every word. Did God honor Paul? Did God take to heart Paul's humble, faithful assertion that I give my work over to you, Lord? Whatever I did, I know that in you it's not in vain. But when he died, it seemed like it was in vain. When Jesus Christ died, is tempted to think, tempted to ask maybe, is this in vain? And now to us, is it not tempting for you to look around you, see the dire circumstances you're in, to see the really humiliating circumstances you're in your body humiliates you maybe your your job is humiliating you your family is humiliating you just your general circumstances in life maybe you think and i think accurately so maybe you think that you are in a parallel circumstance in a way as paul was in a roman prison at the end of his life some of you may literally be at the end of your life, but don't worry, you're not going to die. You're going to be snatched away, okay? It's imminent, imminent. Paul's been asleep since he got his head chopped off in Rome. Not a bad way to go, as I've said. If I had to choose a way to go, that would be awesome, just great. Almost better than dying of natural causes. I would say definitely better than dying of natural causes. Natural causes suck. You can quote me on that. So... You're feeling like you're also in prison, in a sense. You can't get out of your body, though you desperately want to. You can't get out of the situation you're in. Everybody's in some terrible situation that they wish they could just be out of. If I were out of this situation, I hear you. I know what you're saying. I've said the same thing. If I could just be out of this situation, everything would be fine. You want to snap your finger and just be delivered. Delivered. Was Paul delivered from prison? In a way, yes. He was delivered by death. Heh. Forget that for a minute. That was not too encouraging news. Um, we're going to be delivered by the snatching away. Well, you, but you did think for a while that it was going to happen in your day. Right. But then when did you realize that it wasn't? When you were in jail. Not, not until then? Okay. Were you okay with that? I didn't think so. Well, a lot of us think you're okay with it because, I mean, you're the Apostle Paul. You're great. You have great faith. Yes, true. He's still in the flesh, he's saying. He's still in the flesh, and he still longed to see Christ. He did not want to die. Paul did not long for the death state. He longed to be with Christ, to be with his Savior and Lord. I understand that. Thank you. Thanks for encouraging us because we tend to think that you're this great, exalted saint. Well, I mean, yeah, I know, right, you are a saint, but I mean exalted in that you'd had like almost no feelings, you were above humanity. Right, that's what I thought. Okay, yeah, thank you. No, the guy was not above humanity. He longed to be, to be delivered from his earthly vessel, and he longed for his circumstance to change. But here's my point. His circumstance did change. While he's been sleeping, the sleep of death... That's an analogy. You're not really sleeping in death, but it's like you're asleep because there's no consciousness. What has God, God has been pretty busy for 2,000 years packaging Paul's work, inspiring people to still pursue Paul's work, to understand it, to grasp the evangel of the grace of God that the first century saints grasped who were Paul's friends, who were members of the ecclesias to whom he wrote, the Ephesians, the Romans, the Corinthians, the Galatians. And did I mention the Colossians? 
Don't worry, I'm not going to forget the Colossians. I know, I know you like, but you didn't like them as much as the Philippians. True? Right, don't worry, I won't tell them. What we think is a wasted life, what we think is a discouragement, God is now, while we're living. See, he's doing this while we're living. He's gathering up all these amazing things that have happened because we've been alive. Think of it's a wonderful life with a uh, term store, term store, it's a wonderful life. Think of all the things. You may be think, looking back at your life and thinking, what a waste. But you have no idea how many lives you've changed for the better. You have no idea how many people you've blessed. You have no idea of the things you've done. And God is storing it up, just like he did for Paul. Storing it up. Where do you see what I've done with your life? You may think it's nothing. You may be discouraged. You may think you're going to die and it's all going to go to waste. You're not even sure after you died. Well, not that you're thinking about it, but... Uh, you're not even sure if your letter's going to make it to Timothy. You're not even going to sure what they did with Romans. They kept it. They kept Romans. Yes, you know that now. They kept Romans. And all the other ones. Anyway, God's going to do the same thing with you. You can put your faith in him. He will not disappoint you. He will, he will outperform any expectation you have of him. I mean, by a million times. And you're going to be just as shocked as Paul. This is my point. You're going to be just as shocked as Paul when you rise to meet the Lord in the air and you see what God has done with your sorry, air quotes, wasteful, air quotes, miserable, air quotes, life. You're going to be just as shocked as Paul is when he finds out that his letters were preserved. There's a million, billion copies of them. And the people are still sweating over his words and why didn't you use punctuation well that's a terrible excuse the greek didn't have punctuation okay whatever so be encouraged god is faithful he's gathered your tears he's gonna pay you back lavishly for all the tears you've shed he's gathered your good works many of which you don't even know what they are you don't even know what they are god's gonna remind you it's gonna be a great day the confetti's going to fly. The party horns are going to blow. And it's going to make Christ even happier to lavish us with these things than it'll make us. Which is not to say that we are not going to be extremely happy.